somebody work at McDonald's if they couldn't flip burgers? Yes or no? No, they couldn't. But you can walk into a car dealership and you can walk up to any salesman on the showroom floor and say, I need to think about it. I need to talk to my wife. What's your best price? Payment's too high. Price too high. I got a couple more cars I want to look at. And they don't know what to say. Well, so my first question is, let's do first things first. Let's not, let's not get into the salespeople for a minute. Who's in charge? So before we go into the sales team for a minute, because I know that you have a lot of leaders, David, a lot of people are like, hey, my sales team isn't as good as they should be. Well, let me ask you a question. Number one, let's go through, through some leadership stuff. Since we're talking about amateurs and pros, do people want to be led by a leader that reaches for more? Yes or no? Yes, they do. Is the leadership team, the people that are in charge of the team, are they reaching for more? Are you? Secondly, leaders have one thing in common. They have followers. Leaders don't have a rank. They don't have a title. They don't have seniority, David. They are leaders. Those are managers. Managers have rank, seniority, and titles. Managers, they use manipulation to get people to do what they need to do. If you don't do this, I won't pay you. Leaders lead by inspiration. I'm going to ask everybody a question on the call. Call your sales team in when you go back to the office. Bring everybody in and say, hey, guys, I want to let you know that I want to look up to the mentors that you are looking up to. So I want to know who are your mentors in life? Everybody in the room, here's a pen, piece of paper. Do me a favor. You don't have to write your name on it, but the way out the door, I want you to write down who you look up to, who inspires you, who's your mentor, and that way I can look them up tonight. You tell your team that. And as they're writing down their favorite people on Instagram that they look up to, the people that inspire them, when everybody leaves the room, go look at the piece of paper of every single one of those people and open them up on the desk and see how many of those pieces of paper have your name on it. I'm going to tell you, we are in the era of the worst leadership in the history of time. Everybody got paid a lot of money the last year or two, and ego, pride, and entitlement has crept across the nation. And I am telling you right now, when trust leaves the company, the Lehman Brothers, use them for an example, they were a powerful company, they fell overnight. When stress enters the company, are people going to stress this year to make the same money they made last year? Yes. When stress comes into a company and a leader isn't present and there is no trust, people will leave. We are going to see a lot of people get taken out this year because the only way to wealth is through self-education. And if you're not educating yourself right now, see, there's some people right now, David, on the call that they're driving, and I completely understand why they're not writing stuff down. But there's a lot of people on the call that right now that they're slow to write stuff down. They're slow to learn. They're uncoachable. Could you imagine a leader, a leader who wanted to lead a team, but who was uncoachable, him or herself? Doesn't make sense. So a follower, let's talk about what a follower is, David. So if you want to be a leader, let's talk about a follow, what a follower is. A follower is someone who volunteers to go where you go. Underline volunteers, okay? They choose to follow you. You can employ everybody. And when you say employ them, what are you employing them for? Money? If you're employing them for money, don't get mad when they leave you, go across the street, and you have a recruitable team because you've only hired them for money and someone offers them more money. You see, in the automotive space, I've seen a lot of people that say, hey, my team, this guy left me. He's going to get, make more money. Well, a leader isn't present. And by the way, how did you motivate and inspire that person? Was it because they believe what you believe and, and, and you believe what they believe and you guys have a community and like you built a culture? Or is it because you motivated their entire life in your, in your industry by money? Money is a result of doing a great job. Everybody wants to be led. People want to find a leader who is reaching for more and inspires them. So there's two ways to influence human behavior. Number one, manipulation. Number two, inspiration. You choose. You can inspire or you can manipulate. Most managers have no trust with their people. Right now, if you pulled the rank, the title, the, the leadership position out from underneath your managers, would your salespeople still follow them? More than likely, most wouldn't. 
In some cases, some of you on the call have done a great job of being later, uh, leaders, and thank you for that. Because training doesn't work when a leader isn't present. Okay? Now, I want to say this. Doing what you say you're going to do is not trust. There's a lot of people that are in management that are reliable. Look, so write this down. Doing what you say you're going to do is not trust. That's called reliability. Trust is a feeling. Okay? Trust is a feeling. I'll bet Liza on the call, her people trust her. I'll bet she's really reliable too, but I bet her people trust her because there's a feeling. Same with you, David. When trust is absent, everybody write absent down. When trust is absent, a follower will not be found. Trust is a feeling, and if people can't feel it, they won't follow you. True leaders know how to breed. Everybody write this down. True leaders know how to breed true loyalty and create trust. In a world that we live in now, and in a time where weak managers and manipulation is the norm, the world is thirsty for real leaders. So I will just say to finish this up on the leader segment, great leaders think, act, and communicate completely different than everyone else. So on the left side of the paper, you see amateur, and on the right side, you see pro. Go ahead. Losers look around at everybody and they blame, make excuses. They'll, they'll, they'll tell you every reason why it didn't work. Okay. Winners look in the mirror and they say, Hey, I'm also, I'm the problem. I'm also the solution. Everything that's happening in my company is because of me. I create my own economy. I create my own reality. If grosses are going down, let me ask everybody a question. If the customer experience was through the roof, would customers still pay a premium? Yes or no? Absolutely. Does your staff know, does your team know how to create a customer experience that is mind-blowing, that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world? If you go to a Starbucks right now and somebody was taking a survey, what do you think about car salesmen? They'd say robbers, cheats, thieves, liars. Well, what would they say after they met your team? Because that's all that matters. You see, this is where the great separator, no middle ground, 99% sheep, 1% lion, this is where the great separator is. It's very simple. Amateurs versus pros. In 2023, the prepared will destroy the unprepared. Write that down. The prepared will destroy the unprepared. There are three things we got to get prepared for. Number one, obviously, leadership needs to wake up. Number two, we got to make sure that on the front gate, we're deadly. We got to make sure that on the phones, we're deadly. And we got to make sure that in the internet department, we are dangerous. Those are the three entry points to any car dealership. And I want you to also write this down because this is extremely important. An individual can be beat, but a team cannot be beat. I have a team of 50 plus guys. We've broken every record in the world and it's not, it is not about me. It is about my people. I feel pain as a parent when I see my people hurting. When I see someone who is not striving or going to another level, my heart breaks because they're everything to me. They're family. I see managers. I'm in stores every day. We have 11,000 stores on our training system. And I walk into stores and I'll hear a manager look out on the showroom floor and point at a salesman who's on his phone, distracted. Ah, screw that guy, man. I can't believe him. If he doesn't get to work, I'm going to fire him. And he's a barstool warrior. Instead of walking out there and inspiring that young man or older woman or whoever and say, hey, Look, I love you. And the fact that you're here, it's my job and my responsibility to make sure that you make a living. And obviously, I've probably done something wrong. I'm sorry I've been so busy. Let's reset. Everything okay at home? Do you have the resources and tools that you need to be successful? Maybe I haven't explained to you how to win. Number one, that's all my fault. Notice I owned it. Okay? I went first. What I would like to ask is, do you want to be successful? Do you want to 
have this great opportunity that the automotive industry provides to everybody <laughs> who is hungry and wants an opportunity. We don't even need experience in education. Hungry and an opportunity is how I hire. I can sit down with anybody and have a conversation for two minutes and tell if they're part of my organization or not. If they are and you hire them, train them. Training has the highest ROI on anything else in the company. We spend thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars on inventory and millions and, and advertising and buildings and marketing and technology, but we spend pennies on our people responsible to make the money on all of it. And that's why we are sweeping through the nation and we, are, we have the best leadership training in the world because we believe in total immersion, which every leader should do on the call right now. Every salesperson that you are responsible for, it is a privilege to be a leader. Throw your title in the trash can, it is a privilege. We have the responsibility for these people to make sure that they have the resources that they need to be successful. Going back 35 years from now, David, when you sold, all you wanted to do was be the best. And every single person on every showroom floor has that opportunity to be the best as long as they have the right resources. If managers do the training all day, who's managing? No one. That's why people have training systems. And why our training system is successful is because number one, I've created the best training in the world that's inspirational, that's fired up, that's motivational, that works on the mindset, skill set, works on the habits daily of how people can be successful. But also we allowed companies to also go enter in their own training so that it's perfect from every aspect. And we don't believe in, in vendors. You call me a vendor, I'll cancel you. I'm a partner. You know what that means? I got your back for life. Whatever you need, let me know. Hey guys, I just want to tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.